The analog buffer is very similar to the digital buffer in the sense that it allows you to control the propagation of data from one symbol to another using a digital input as a gating mechanism. To get an analog buffer into your program, click the logic folder under the program view, type in the speed key A buff, and hit enter. Alternatively, you can expand the analog operations folder under the logic symbols, and then click and drag an analog buffer over to the detail view. The analog buffer has one digital input and an expandable number of inputs and outputs that can take on analog or serial signals. The behavior of the outputs depends on which type of signal is being used on the inputs. The basic behavior is this, whatever is on the input side is transmitted to the output side while the enable line is high. There are some exceptions to this rule though. For analog signals, when the enable line goes low, all analog outputs keep their previous values. When the enable line goes high, any analog inputs are resent or propagated to their outputs. And it's a little bit different for serial signals. Serial signals are transient, so if a serial string is sent while the buffer's enable line is low, nothing will be transmitted once the enable line goes high. That is, unless you tie the serial input to a separate symbol called the make string permanent. But the same basic rule applies for both signal types. While the enable line is true, the outputs take on the values of their inputs. There are a lot of rules with the analog buffer, so let's make an example program to demonstrate them. We're going to use an analog buffer, an analog ramp, two serial input outputs, a make string permanent, and a toggle. First off, the toggle is going to control the enable line of the analog buffer, and it's going to be driven by our X panel. The ramp will have a ramp time of 4 seconds, and it will be fed to the first input of the analog buffer. The output of the ramp will also be shown on the X panel. The first serial input output will have three different strings and will feed the second input of the analog buffer, with its output routed to a serial input on the X panel. The second serial input output will be similar to the first one, with the exception of the parameters and the fact that its output will be tied to the make string permanent symbol. The permanent string size is just a way to tell the make string permanent symbol how many characters it should expect to make permanent. And last but certainly not least, the outputs of the analog buffer will all be copied over to the appropriate inputs of the X panel. All right, so with that finished, let's compile and upload to the processor. The first thing we notice is with the buffer disabled, the outputs of the buffer display nothing regardless of the values of the inputs. But watch what happens when we enable the buffer. The analog output of the buffer takes on the exact value of the ramps output, and the second serial output matches exactly what we have in the second serial I.O. So why didn't both of the serial signals get pushed to the buffer's output? It's because the first serial input output didn't have its output tied to the make string permanent symbol. Like we said before, serial strings are non-permanent by default, so after they're transmitted they disappear from the signal, unless you tie the serial signal to a make string permanent. So with the buffer enable, all inputs are propagated to their outputs as the inputs are changed, even the SIO with transient outputs has its values propagated to the outputs of the analog buffer. If we disable the analog buffer, the last values received are what's displayed on the output, and changing the inputs on the buffer doesn't have any effect on the buffer's output. Since analog buffers give you the power to control the flow of analog and serial signals, they're really handy for a huge variety of applications, but they're especially useful for large-scale AV distribution scenarios, mostly because Crestron's video switchers use analog values to select which inputs are routed to which outputs. So consider a system with two projectors that can show the same or different content. You'd probably have two analog initializes for the video inputs, and you could use two buffers to control whether the same content or different content ends up on each of the projectors. The first buffer would probably be your synced content, which means that it passes the values of the first analog initialize to both inputs on the switcher. The second buffer would be your unsynced content, passing the values of the first analog initialize to the first input, and the second analog initialize to the second input on the switcher. 
and depending on your setup, controlling the flow of the analog signals could be much easier than the digital alternative. Well, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give us a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to see something else in our videos, leave us a comment below or on our Twitter or Facebook or Tumblr or Instagram pages. Maybe MySpace. We might have a MySpace. <laughs>